Hey guys, uh, one of the questions that I got on my oil change video, and it's a question that is brought up constantly on discussions about engine break-in and oil selection, oil changes, is whether the, um, the oil that comes from the factory for the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 or Z1000SX, whether it's beneficial to leave that oil in for the first 600 miles. Uh, the, the thinking being that there is something special about that oil that it's formulated to help the break-in process. And I think it's a really good question and it's something I don't know the answer to. Uh, so I decided to get an oil analysis done. And I'll be using Blackstone Laboratories. These guys are based out of northern Indiana, so it's pretty close to me. And this is a name that I see constantly whenever researching any oil issues. Um, if you're not in this area or in the United States, um, I know that there are plenty of companies who provide this type of service so you can just check to see uh, what companies near you can provide oil analysis. So it's kind of interesting. Um, you go on the website, it's $28 for the analysis, but they'll send you the sample kit for free. So you just request a kit and they send it out to you. And we'll take a look at uh, what this comes with. And then you get a sample of your oil, send it in, and then they'll do a bunch of tests and send you back a report. Um, they also ask for some information about the oil, how long has it been in the vehicle, what type of vehicle is it, um, you know, are there any specific issues that you're noticing. So one of the things that I'll have to mention to them is that I did my oil change at about 200 miles, and when I drained the oil, I drained it into a new plastic oil drain container. Um, so there's no other oil in there to contaminate it, but that oil has been sitting in my garage for a few weeks, so it's probably absorbing some moisture um, what Blackstone recommends when you do an, uh, an oil sample is that you take the oil hot out of the engine because that will eliminate any moisture. Um, they do say that if, if it has been sitting out or if the engine is cold, just let them know and then they can account for that moisture content when they're doing their analysis. Uh, so let's take a look at the kit and then after that we'll go get the sample, send it in, and then we'll discuss the results at the end of the video. Alright, so let's take a look at what comes with this kit. On the outside, you can see that there's actually a USPS shipping label, um, which is interesting because it, I guess I'm just supposed to ship it back in this container. Uh, so I'm curious to see if I have any issues trying to ship this back. Um, inside the kit, let's see, uh, there is a sample bottle. This is an oil absorbent material, probably to wrap the bottle in. Uh, a label. Some instructions. All right, so I'm gonna go out to the garage, uh, get a sample of oil in this bottle, and then we'll get it sent off. Alright, so fortunately there were no problems mailing the oil sample back to Blackstone Labs. It took about three days after they received it for them to send me the results of the analysis, which I have here. Uh, in my note to them, I explained the purpose of my test and they provided some helpful information. Uh, up here they said, um, let's see, we can't say whether this oil is synthetic or conventional since it requires testing the base stock, which they don't do. Uh, but rest assured, there's no harm in switching to an off-the-shelf oil as long as it meets manufacturer's specs. Factory oils tend to show a lot of metal and silicon from the wear-in process, but most of the metals look okay compared to universal averages here. That's likely thanks to the short oil run preventing the metal from accumulating, and that's fine. Silicon shows factory sealer is washing out. No obvious concerns at 145 miles. And then so they break it down. Um, here are the different things that they are able to test for in the oil all these categories down here. Um, and then really we're just looking at this column, uh, which shows the amount 
in parts per million. Um, and they do some they provide some additional data down here. Um, so they weren't able to say whether it's a conventional or synthetic oil. I'm guessing it's a conventional oil. Uh, but the thing that I was really uh, curious about was the zinc and the phosphorus content. Um, motor oils that are specially formulated for engine break-in are typically high in zinc and phosphorus, uh, since those additives are what protect the metal surfaces during the break-in process. Uh, so those are the critical additives that would help indicate whether the bike comes with a special break-in oil or not. And I don't want to get into the details too much of engine break-in since I plan on discussing that in a later video, but I do want to quickly explain why zinc and phosphorus are critical additives for engine break-in. For motorcycles, uh, a critical wear point is the interface between the camshaft and the valves. And if we look at this picture, uh, this is a diagram of a camshaft. It's this piece down here on the bottom. And then these are the valves, and these would connect to your intake and exhaust valves. So the camshaft rotates, and this piece just rubs up against uh, the camshaft here. Now this is actually a roller cam, so you can see this roller bearing that would roll up against the camshaft as it rotates, and it helps mitigate any friction. And this is what you find in a, a modern car engine, but not a motorcycle engine. Uh, so a motorcycle engine doesn't have this roller mechanism. It's just a flat piece of metal that rubs up against the camshaft as the camshaft rotates. So there's a lot of friction. And just for example, here's a, a flat tappet cam. Uh, and that's flat tappet cams are what you'd find in a motorcycle. Um, so this is the camshaft, and then this is the flat tappet that just rubs up against the camshaft. Um, so let's see here. When you look at oils that are specially formulated for engine break-in, they're typically very high in zinc and phosphorus. So looking at this AMSOIL article, uh, their break-in oil, which is for uh, vehicles, um, some hot rods and uh, some high-performance cars do use flat tappet cams. Um, so this break-in oil contains 2200 ppm of zinc and 2000 ppm of phosphorus. And if you look at the AMS oil page for their break in oil that they mention it right here, it contains zinc and phosphorus anti wear additives. And then same thing if we look at Royal, Pur uh, sorry, Royal Purple, and they make a engine break in oil. And they also mention the high levels of zinc and phosphorus to optimize protection in flat tappet and roller engines. So that's just kind of a quick explanation of why uh, zinc and phosphorus are important. And if there's heightened levels of zinc and phosphorus, then that helps indicate that it's a special break in oil. So going back to the analysis, looking at zinc and phosphorus down here, uh, we have 927 ppm of zinc and 828 ppm of phosphorus. And so these numbers are actually just slightly on the low side of what would be normal. And Blackstone provides these as just some uh, kind of average benchmarks. So they mention 1100 uh, ppm for zinc and 1200 ppm of phosphorus. So this is actually a little bit lower than those uh, general averages. And looking at the Mobile One motorcycle oil, this is the Mobile One Racing 4T. This is the oil that I put in at my first oil change. Uh, they publish their phosphorus and zinc levels, and they're actually 1100 and 1200 uh, for phosphorus and zinc. So this Mobile One oil actually has higher levels of zinc and phosphorus uh, than what was found in the factory oil um, at 145 miles. So and it's a lot of information to process, but my takeaway from all of this is that the factory oil is not a special oil formulation for engine break-in. So you should be fine replacing the factory oil with any quality motorcycle oil at any point during the break-in process. Uh, but if you can, uh, like I was able to do with the Mobile One, uh, check and make sure that it does have an adequate amount of zinc and phosphorus. Uh, but so far, all of the motorcycle oils that I've researched do contain similar amounts. I'll also be making a video in the future about my thoughts on engine break-in and the different theories on how to break in an engine. 
so post down below if you have any questions about this or if you want to share your thoughts or if you have any ideas for future videos. Uh, this video is actually inspired by comments on my oil change video. Uh, so I appreciate those comments and I do read them. And uh, yeah, so I'd like to hear your thoughts and thanks for watching.